Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Looks like I got behind on fixing pads. Let's see, uh, we'll do this and I'll move the pile so you can see it better. Two piles. So as I go through tapes, first, like I said in a previous episode, the number one thing that there's a problem with, uh, if there's a problem, is that there is missing pad or moved pad or whatever. So I stack them up and eventually I get to them. Now let's check out what we got here. Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. This is um, Greatest Hits Volume 2. I don't know, call me hokey, I love Herb Alpert. Produced by Herb and Jerry Moss. Copyright 1973. Dolby, so this, I, don't see anything saying that this is printed in the USA. This is 1973. No, nah, this tape can't be that that old. Well, maybe that's why it doesn't have a thing. So let me just grab a piece of plastic. So, like I said, we'll just that's kind of cool. I like Herb Albert, and as he gets into the, he just keeps going and into the 80s, and his music stays kind of. The same, still kind of hokey, but still pretty awesome. I don't know. I like that hokey shit. Uh, so this one's got the pad in it, if you can see that. See, it's there. So we're just gonna do this. So, and we'll just get a drop of Crazy Glue. Anybody remember the Crazy Glue commercials where the guy had the Crazy Glue on a hard hat and was hanging upside, hanging from his helmet off of iron girder with a horrible New York accent? This is the uh, Beautiful Music, Beautiful Memories collection. This whole thing had, this is volume one, I guess. Um, I bought this at a antique shop, consignment shop, weird place in Vermont, if anybody knows about it, over in Keechi Gorge. It's a really nice, weird place. But anyway, I bought, like, there was like 25 or a bunch of them, and most of them are really hokey, and a bunch of them have no glue. It's all Great American Songbook stuff, which I, I like some of it. And so this is worth putting a dab of crazy glue on. Now, if you notice, I'm leaving the, the, the tape up while it dries. Because once that crazy glue dries and sets, it's fine. But we don't want to mess with, we don't want to put it back down and have it be wet. Because that does take a second to set. Hey, remember Johnny? He kept busting in when we were, when we were recording the original video about this. So we're going to say... Fix Johnny finally, I guess. Johnny Horton, copyright 1985, Golden Circle Incorporated, Stanford, Connecticut, all rights reserved. This is the interesting thing. I don't know if these guys did it legally, if the music got licensed out. Oh, this is the one that I made. Okay, so remember I showed you this thing with the felt pad, the black felt pad that I was trying to, and how it humped out and everything? Yeah, so I put this tape in, and I wasn't sure how it was going to sound, and it sounded like shite. It sounded horrible. So I'm going to take this out and put one of my makeshift pads in and see if that makes a difference because, yeah, this, either that or the tape's just no good, which is possible because it is an old tape, and it, this doesn't, this does not exude quality. So, I, you know, I don't know who the golden circle was. I don't know. What I'm starting to see is that there was a lot of low quality cassettes put out, mass market stuff. And I guess that happens with everything. But like all the, uh, it's, once you get into 30 or 40 years, the copyright starts going down. It's kind of like, whatever, we'll just buy up whatever. And tapes were so cheap. <sighs> Stinky. I don't know if I want to peel that. I guess I'm going to peel it. Oh, that's right. Snap your knives, kids. That's what they're for. 
Yeah, saving anything by not snapping it. All right, we're gonna cut that. Yep. Oh, that's much better. You know, I was gonna do that before the show or whatever before I started, and I was like, no, you know, I'm gonna do that on make a point of that that you have to snap your blades. Now this has got an adhesive backing, but I don't trust it, so I'm going to also put a dollop of glue on that. Now that's going to be a regular pad. We'll see how that works. And maybe the tape's just old. I have gotten some old, old tapes. Poor, poor Roger Whitaker. Now I want to show you this. Now this is out of a batch of tapes that I've been going through. RCA APK10855. I don't know if that is actually in sequential order, but look at this tape. I mean, you've seen these before. They're not that rare. So I'm sure anybody who's watching this has already seen an RCA tape from 1975. Um, but this one's actually interesting because this is printed on here and I, I have a lot of them with paper labels, but this one's printed on, right on here, which is interesting. Uh, printed in the United States, RCA records. This is Roger Whitaker's Last Farewell and other hits. This is actually going in the trash because it is completely washed out. There's no value of having a garbage quality sounding tape anymore. The music is available, so whatever. Um, so, I, But I wanted to show this, and this is what I wanted to show actually, because I thought this was really interesting. And I will save this J card, and if somebody needs this J card, we can maybe work something out. Um, but I thought this was interesting, because all right, it's just a regular or whatever here. But you can tell this is really old, because it must be first printing here. I don't know what somebody wrote on the inside of this, if anybody knows that. That's the code, like, from Lost. RCA, let's see if I there. RCA Stereo Cassettes, Pocket Size Pleasure, a wide variety of music, pop, rock, original Broadway cast, movie soundtrack, classical, country western, from the world's greatest roster of recording artists. Start your RCA cassette library here and now. This is 1975, and what was I talking about in a previous episode? The cassette era started basically in 1975, and here's um, Exhibit A. And so that's kind of cool. Uh, and it is really hard to throw that in the trash, so I'm not going to, even though I said I was going to. I, but it's not going in the for sale pile or the keep pile. It's just, I don't know. It's, we'll see. It is garbage. It, I, it sounds horrible. Um, and I tried it in a bunch of decks, and it's no good. So, whatever, that's okay. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, anybody know who Vaughn Monroe is? The mellow voice of Vaughn Monroe. And here, again, it's obviously off of a record because it's the square, but the old. This is copyright 1982 CBS, but like this, it just kind of feels chintzy. If I was comeback, cassette comeback Tony, I'd be cursing for not having a big pen and I'm cursing myself and I'd be smelling the tape. No, but it does look like a low quality brown tape and whoa. Oh, where did you go? All right, well, I'll grab a substitute plastic thing. I don't know. It doesn't look like a very high quality tape. I don't know what it, it you know, it, it's like, well, how much money are you going to put into these things? Because this is obviously some, some, B-list guy from the 50s that only your grandmother knows, remembers now, because this is this is pre-boomer stuff, and like that's all like ancient history. Nobody remembers anything like that. Nobody remembers that far back, which is actually brings me up to another topic. I got these tapes. Actually. <laughs> Really started bringing back memories. Senior prom. This is actually tape two, and then I found tape three in my pile, and I'm now searching for tape one. So senior prom, and I looked at my wife when I started listening to this, and 
I said, uh, I looked at her, I said, you're a little bit older than me. <laughs> this doesn't sound like my senior prom. It, is this your senior prom? And she says, uh, no. No, I don't think so. It's very funny. Now, if you are of my age and grew up in the 80s, you probably remember infomercials or 30 second commercials or one minute commercials for these set of tapes. And this is for the lost 50s people. Which had a minor resurgence in the 80s and then it got crowded out by the boomers that wanted to go to the 60s. And first, like 1968. And, you know, they didn't call on the silent generation for nothing. They're kind of, it's, it's funny, if you follow the, the, if you follow the generationals, um, or the generation theory, the boomers and the millennials are a lot alike, and the exiles and the silencers are silences, whatever, are a lot alike. Silence, because even though it's a four four generation cycle, it's a every other one too. So, I don't know who Mitch Miller is, but this is a funny looking picture, and it's the 16 most requested songs. Ooh, this is. This isn't missing a pad. That's the copper thing is pushed down. Springs, ah, there we go. That's all that needed. All right, that looks good. We didn't even need eight for that. Now this has been a few minutes while I'm rambling here, so we'll put these guys away here. Uh, so anyway, I was thinking about the 50s and everything for CD prom. Like, so it's a lot of doo-wop and slow stuff and I'm, I'm like whenever you hear senior prom or stuff like that it always goes back to the 50s and 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 I don't even know why because we all had senior proms so it doesn't make much sense to me but that's okay I'm not here to make sense of anything but we also ended up with in that same batch that I was listening to back to the 50s volume 2 which was actually pretty good it, it's a it's a lost time of music that, like I said, got drawn out by the boomers and drawn out by the by rock and roll and like even the early '60s stuff. All the stuff from oh, like the Billboard top hits of 1962. By the way, I love these Billboard by Rhino Records uh, top hits. It's usually only 10 or 12 songs on it, and it's by year. And I started collecting those when I was in high school. And now that I'm back in the cassettes, I keep finding them. And I'm, I'm actually, you know, trying to put together that collection. Now this thing just moved, but we'll, we'll glue them back on. So that, yeah, even that, when, what more, I was, that, the long 70s podcast, I, I, guys are very dry, but it's very thought provoking what they were talking about the whole time. This is most of what you thought, well, most of what you think about the 60s really happened in the 70s. Because what we think of the 60s is basically 1967 through 1975 is mostly what we think of as the 60s. It's kind of weird to think about it that way. And that leaves most of the 60s as just not that kind of time. Now, oh, by the way, this is... Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons Silver Anniversary Collection. That was tape one and two, or two and one. And this is also, now this is WCI World Communication Inc. in California. This tape is recorded on Dolby V. I mean, this is just, oh, this is kind of gross, actually. It looks like a coffee stain. 1978, so we'll see how this plays, but this is, I don't know what, of 25th anniversary from 1978, so uh, 78, 73, 63, 53, so very old music. I wonder how this is going to play. And this is, but the, but, okay, that says 1978, that must be the, the, the album. The tape is 1985, but who's World Communications, Inc.? So who did these guys, like, who were the, there was a lot more record labels before. Oh, look at that. Now that's a, that's a very opaque leader. Very dark color. We don't have. I'm gonna cut one for them. I have been rambling quite a bit here because I've been actually doing something while I am rambling. But 
drop back into the 50s a little bit and into the early 60s because there's some good music there. There's early rock and roll and doo-wop and all sorts of just like good music that we just missed because whatever. Here's another one I wanted to show you. This is pretty cool. The Greatest Hits of Glenn Miller by members of the Glenn Miller Orchestra, Volume 1. So this is like, now the Glenn Miller Orchestra had at any one time 20 to 30 people in it, so okay. So, you know, the the third trumpet player and the, and the percussionist got together and they recorded an album. Hey, whatever. Good times, right? And... I can't wait to listen to Anne Marie. Let's keep it that way. All right, good. Now look at that tape. Is that a chrome tape or is that just gross tape? We're gonna find out. This is another old tape. I think it's like. You know, let me tell you. Off the bat, I can't read it upside down. Don't cut yourself. <clears throat> Peel the sticker off the back, but not that sticky part. That's where the glue goes. Right, and, and you push down, you get out of the way. So that's either really high quality tape or that slip VHS, right? Uh, 1978 Capitol Records, just a piece of paper on the thing. I don't know, I don't know why I like Amory, I don't think I do really. By the way, I said, oh, this is pretty interesting. I think I've seen one of these. Do I have one of these? No, I also have number, number five. This is number four, Mozart, Listener's Choice. We were talking last week about compilations, really good compilation. So the best of Mozart goes really well with number five, the best of Beethoven. And the last one I have to fix is the best of Roger Miller, which I have probably three or four different versions of this. Maybe not the same. Maybe it's the Roger Miller's greatest hits, or maybe, I'm not sure exactly, but he's all got the same. He's only got a few album, a few, a couple dozen songs. So, What's our big takeaway here? Don't sleep on the late 50s, early 60s stuff. That's how we fix cassettes. Don't forget to stand them up and let them, let them breathe. We looked at some old tapes. We looked at number 1975, Roger Whitaker. And talked about the boomers just overpowering the silent generation and them just putting the shirt and tie on and going to work and taking it because that's what they did. God bless them. Anyway, that's all I have for tonight. Thanks for hanging in for 20 minutes. And that's that.